Hello and welcome back to This Is Working. We've been doing This Is Working for over a month now in this new format where we go live weekly with people who have a sense of how to steer through this pandemic or what's coming next. Um, we've talked with people who are leading the vaccine charge like Bill Gates. We've talked to people who are champions of small business like Mark Cuban. Of all the people we've talked to, no one has driven the kind of interest that today's guest has. Sarah Blakely is the CEO of Spanx. She is a self-made billionaire. She created a product that, and, and, and hundreds of products now that are beloved by women everywhere. And the story of how she did it is beloved as well. And one of the interesting things about Sarah Blakely is that um, she started off selling fax machines door to door. She worked on the uh, uh, Spanx on the side for a year before launching it. And she built this entire company herself, still owns 100% of it. And the company for the majority of its life has never done any advertising. Sarah's story was always the advertising, her story of how to make it how she did everything um, and what kind of, what that kind of empowerment means to you as a buyer and the consumer and to the company. It's really uh, been one of the ways that the company has actually thrived. So she's been incredibly honest. If you follow her on LinkedIn, you follow her on Instagram, you follow her anywhere, you get to see a lot of her life. Uh, that is part of the company story is Sarah's life. So we know that she's gonna be open and honest about how to think through uh, what comes next with this pandemic. She's put a lot of her own money into helping female entrepreneurs. We're going to talk about that here as well. Um, and we're just going to get all kinds of great advice from Sarah Blakely. So for those of you streaming in from South Carolina, New Jersey, Canada, wherever you're from, there's Sarah Blakely. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us here today. Welcome. I'm sorry for the delay. <laughs> I guess there's like Wi-Fi issues in RVs. I don't know. I'm really sorry about that. But hi, everyone. Well, let's start there. You are, you're calling in from an RV. Where, where are you right now? Yes. So we are somewhere in Florida. And we uh, decided that quarantining with four children under the age of 10 in a home just wasn't enough. We had to take it up a notch. So my husband, we were debating on if we were going to rent an RV or go ahead and splurge and buy one. And we bought it. And um, we are quarantining now in an RV driving up, around. We don't even have super set plans. We kind of just got in it and decided we really needed a change of scenery for a little bit. That's amazing. Now, are you driving? <laughs> um, I have not driven yet, but we did this out west last summer and I did drive half the time then. Got and it. I have to say my husband is very cautious. I feel very safe with him, but he drives significantly below the speed limit. So it takes us much longer to get, you know, safe from Georgia to Florida than maybe the average person. Sure. And I'm sure everyone on the road loves sitting behind you as you slowly cruise down the, the, the interstate. Um, I would love to talk to you about the, the, the uh, you know, you started this company on $5,000 you've been through hardship of trying to launch something but what we're going through now is something that no one in business in our generation has experienced before would you just talk a little bit about how the pandemic has hit you and Spanx and how you've thought about how the company makes it through this what kind of changes you've had to make or just what it's been like in this period yes absolutely i mean Spanx is deeply affected like so many other businesses we are in the retail space, which obviously has had an enormous uh, impact during this time. So um, our sales are significantly down. We've had to buckle down. And I'll, I'll tell you, I'll share with you kind of how my brain started thinking about it as soon as this pandemic happened. I kind of went in this in this order, I kind of went people. Okay, what do I need to do to keep my people safe? How do I communicate with them? And how do I communicate not only with the people on our team, but our partners and our vendors? So the manufacturers that we've been partners with for a long time and our vendors and people who sell Spanx like Nordstrom and you know all of the retail stores. So that was number one. Then number two, I immediately went to cut costs. Like how do I, where can we save right now? And something that Spanx has been doing for a long time is a zero-based budget. 
And I cannot emphasize enough how much I believe that's helped us through the years. So instead of just people submitting a rolling budget every year, every year the budget starts at zero and each leader in the organization has to make a case for the money being spent. And when this happened, we regrouped as a leadership team and each leader redid the budget with the new normal, uh, the zero based budget for this time. So we cut costs where we could right now. And then my brain went to inventory. I don't know, some people own businesses with a lot of inventory, some don't. Spanx is inventory heavy. So we started uh, having conversations immediately with our manufacturing partners on where we could scale back inventory that was on order, trying to gauge what's the right amount of inventory to have for fall and beyond, because this is a moving target. And then, um, and then obviously we went to where can we make money now? Where, where's the opportunity? And for us, that's been mostly online. I think most of all of our customers are online and on social media right now. And then how, three month to three week plan, like short plans, like how are we gonna maximize sales in this short period of time to get us through the first part of this crisis? And, um, and then, you know, hidden opportunities, like where's the blessing? I'm a big believer. Entrepreneurs in general are people, the ones who make it are the people who take obstacles and turn them into opportunities. So once we kind of, you know, handled the really extreme stuff that was happening to the business overnight, uh, then we kind of have gotten together and said, where are opportunities and where do we want to go from here? And do we want to change things in our assortment? And, you know, how do we want to invent uh, with this new normal for our customers? Hey, can you and give us any, are there any hints of that already? Are there things that you can talk about where you're saying, this is the world is definitely heading in this direction. We are going to meet our customers there. Well, one thing I can say about Spanx is a big portion of what we make is like comfort wear, you know, as we know the woman's body so well, we've been, you know, making undergarments for her for almost 20 years. And so we obsess fit and comfortable waistbands and things, you know, being really, really soft and comfortable. So that one thing I will say is, you know, the narrative for all of your customers has changed. So your narrative needs to change. Mm. And so, you know, leading with a comfort story makes a lot of sense for us right now and really you know, promoting or talking about the products, especially in our assortment that do that. You know, we're obviously talking about masks, you know, is there something we can do to improve masks and help people, you know, all of us in the foreseeable future are gonna be wearing masks. So that's been a big conversation. And then we've had some other um, sort of, you know, specific product ideas that I don't wanna share now, but, um, but that you could expect to be coming soon. Yeah, sure. When you talked about this, making these kind of three week um, assessments of where the company's going and, ha and how to move forward, what kind of questions were you asking of your leadership? How did you talk to your senior leaders about what you, besides just the zero based budgeting and coming up with the numbers, how did you think about what kind of leadership you wanted out of them? Well, we're all communication is key so really asking everyone to check in with their teams we're doing a virtual all company meeting every week we're having virtual happy hours we're having virtual so we're having fun virtually and connecting because emotional well-being is a really important thing right now for everyone and believe it or not in a crisis and in a time like this this is a fantastic time to build culture and to show your people that you care and people are going to remember in times like this who, who showed up, who did something for them. And so um, I've been communicating with the leaders. They're all communicating with their teams on that. And, you know, putting our heads together and brainstorming on where are the opportunities collectively. And that's inspiring. Uh, on the last week's all company call, I asked everyone in the company to come up with a product idea. I said, I don't care if you're the receptionist, I don't care if you're in logistics or finance, I want a product submission from everybody because I do believe that in times like this, this is where innovation really, it's like it fosters innovation. There's a lot yeah. of great inventions and improvements to process. You know, that's another thing I've been talking to the leadership team about and my president is, you know, where can we affect process? A lot of times businesses, Spanx has been growing, you know, pretty rapidly over the last, you know, several years. And it's harder to, to stop and go, we should, we, we, there's a more efficient way to do this. And this time, this sort of timeout has given us an opportunity to focus on process. 
You talked about your focus on people, people inside your company, but also people outside your company. You started the Red Backpack Fund to uh, give grants to $5,000 grants to female entrepreneurs who are being hurt by the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Would you walk through what that, how you came up with that idea, what inspired you to do something like that, and also what you're hearing from these entrepreneurs? Yeah, so another, so, you know, I kind of shared with you guys what happened in my brain with the pandemic uh, for inside of Spanx. And then I'll share with you kind of where my brain went with outside of the pandemic, I mean, outside of Spanx. And I immediately thought, how can I help? What can we do? We can all help during this time in big and small ways. And I kind of bucketed my thinking into locally and nationally. And then I got out a piece of paper and I started writing where I felt uh, the, the needs were the greatest. And um, the first one, not in any order, but the first one was the people trying to come up with the, the therapeutics and the vaccines. The second was um, the frontline workers. How can we support them? And then it was the food insecure. And then, of course, small businesses. And so um, I've Spanx and I have taken action in all of those buckets um, and uh except for vaccines, we did research there and we ended up putting our resources in the other three um, buckets. But um, I, we decided I, I donated $5 million to help female entrepreneurs at this time. And that was a decision because I am a business owner. I've been a small business owner. And even though Spanx, the brand grew and is global now, I still operate like a small business owner. And um, I just care deeply about entrepreneurs. They're the backbone of our community. And so I, my hope is that by giving $5 million, I'm going to be giving a thousand different women $5,000 each to help them during this time. And I started Spanx with $5,000 20 years ago. It was my savings from selling fax machines door to door. And it's just you know, it was, it was a symbolic number for many reasons. And then everybody's going to get a lucky red backpack as well, because I started Spanx with my red backpack from college and it hangs framed in a glass box on the Spanx headquarters because it's just a reminder that starts small, but think big and that everything you really need is right there already on your back. Hmm. And so it's called the red backpack fund for that reason. And I partnered with Global Giving to do the vetting and the selection of the recipients. So they will be doing all of the screening and the selection, and they will choose 1,000 women, and um, they'll each receive $5,000. And if you're interested in applying, you can apply at globalgiving.org forward slash red backpack fund. And the applications are open again this week. They open for uh, the first week of every month for the next five months. That's great. Uh, so I hope a lot of people who are watching this right now will apply. And I've seen some videos already coming in for people who posted just talking about what kind of an impact $5,000 will have on them, the ability to hire back maybe one person in their company to get started or to make the transition to virtual. Um, and I just wanted to ask you the question about the idea of starting a company right now. You are, uh, when you launched Spanx, it was 98, the economy was humming, you had a job, you were able to put that into, to, to be able to fund Spanx. For people who right now have maybe just lost their jobs or are fearful that they are about to lose their jobs, is this the right time to start a company? Do you recommend that you, that you it's, it's a good time to be an entrepreneur or is this time to go find a job, any job? How do you think about that? So I want to just mention, I started working on my product in 98. So I worked on it at night and on the weekends while I kept my day job for those two years. So I started Spanx in the year 2000. And not long after I started it, 9-11 happened. Right. So 9-11 happened within me being almost a year old or just over a year old. And um, the way I handled that crisis. And, you know, a lot of people would say this is not the time to be starting a business, especially in retail. Um, I just moved forward. I moved forward with everything that I could. And I just didn't let the, the macro environment overwhelm me. And I will say this, if you have a good product, if you're solving a problem, if you are um, making a product or a service better than anything else out there, there's it is always a good time to start a business. Hmm. 
And there's a lot of benefits to starting a business right now and and staying true to your purpose because you know a lot this is a time where a lot of businesses are going to retract or you know maybe you'll have less competition maybe uh people will be more willing to invest in you because you know of what you're offering and if you're staying true to your purpose so I, you know, in 9-11, I'll just tell you briefly, this is just something that seemed crazy at the time. And maybe it was, but when I look back on it, I'm like, you know what? It worked. No one was in the stores and I had no money to advertise. And I was going uh, from every like Neiman Sachs, Nordstrom and Bloomingdale's that I had landed those accounts in Dillard's. I was standing in the store from 8.30 until seven at night every day, selling my, my product for them because I was 100% sure that if I left it up to the sales associates in the hosiery corner of those stores, that they would ship my product back to me about six months later and my story would have been over. And everyone's like, Sarah, why are you going to the stores? There's no one in them right now. Like to go do a Spanx day and try to stand there and sell all day long to customers makes no sense. And I was using little, in like what little income I had then. I was jumping on a plane and renting cars and staying in really sketchy motels along highways. But um, but what ended up happening, I stayed the course. I kept doing it. And because there was very few people in the stores, I made such deep connections with all the sales associates that were standing in those stores that didn't have as much to do and won all of them over. And I ended up creating a sales force that wasn't on my payroll because I was able to educate them on what Spanx was, what it could do for you. I gave them some free product. And, and so I look back on that and I'm like, you know, I just kept going. I kept saying, I'm going to, I'm going to keep doing what, what I've been doing and I'm not going to like freeze or I think it's easy in a crisis like this to become immobilized. And so I just wanted to share that because I didn't know it at the time, but it ended up being hugely beneficial for me to still be selling in an empty store <laughs> with no one in it. Yep. We have Brian Chesky on, Chesky on from Airbnb last week, and he said something similar, which is you just got to keep moving forward. You, when you're in hell, you keep moving forward. And uh, we have a lot of comments coming in. Uh, Rick says, now is the time to build culture. That's brilliant. Denise said, so proud to be in this company. Sarah is the real deal and shows in the company culture. Michelle says, thank you for supporting women entrepreneurs. And we got a question from Karen Bailey, who's clearly a big fan. She knows your story well. Um, she talked about when you first started selling and you got a, a opportunity to uh, present Spanx to Neiman Marcus. You flew to Dallas, you presented it in person. A big part of the story is you being there in person. And you just talked about this, being there in person with people and making that connection. In a world where we can't make those connections right now, where you are on video conferences and Zoom, is it still possible to present new products, to reach out to people? How did you connect in an era where connecting is dangerous? Well, I'm going to tell you something my husband did, which I think is really cool. My husband's an entrepreneur. His name's Jesse Itzler, and he started Marquee Jet and was in the bottom ground level of Zico before they sold Zico coconut water to Coke. And anyway, he's kind of a serial entrepreneur in many different categories. I've stayed in one lane, and he's been in many. But he, uh, he's been sending a box with a plate and a fork and a knife in it to people that he wants to connect with and with a note that said, do you want to have a virtual lunch with me? That's so, brilliant. <laughs> so I think there's so many creative ways right now to still be reaching out with people to be virtually meeting with them. Um, you know, I'm virtually meeting with you right now and, you know, we're conducting this interview. So I wouldn't let the fact that you can't be in person with people right now stop you from your connections and your meetings. That's great. A right, question coming from Paulette. Uh, any advice for women who have a business idea but who are reluctant or not sure how to develop a business plan? So is this Paulette? The Paulette. Yeah, okay. Paulette who asked. So Paulette, I never had a business plan. And um, I, I like to say this a lot, but if you keep waiting until you feel like it's the right time and you're exactly ready, you're going to keep waiting. So you got to jump in with two feet. And what I would tell you that I focused on in the beginning, first of all, I focused on the idea. It was like, what is the idea? And is it, is it amazing? Is it something you would want to buy? Is it something you it would improve your life? That's the first litmus test. And if you have that, then for me, I just focused on make it, sell it, make it, sell it. 
I did not focus on anything else. I did not have a marketing plan. I did not have an org chart plan. I literally was like, I came up with a good idea. I have figured out how to get this made, which is a big part of the equation. And now I'm going to make it, sell it. And I only, I only, um, spent on inventory what I had from selling the first batch. So another thing I would say is be it's okay to start small. I think a lot of businesses get in trouble because they put so much pressure on themselves to scale and to scale fast. And they do that to the detriment of the health of the business. And then a lot of the entrepreneurs end up not owning much of their own dream or their company. So, um, yeah, I would say don't get too caught up on the business plan. Make sure you're really focused on the product. I mean, product is king. I have, if there's anything I have focused on from day one for 20 years, it's the product. And still to this day, I am in the fit room once a week trying on every single product that Spanx sells. And if it, if I don't like it and the team doesn't like it and it doesn't fit right, we don't sell it. We don't launch it. So um, I hope that's helpful. But, you know, a lot of times we feel like we don't have enough experience or we're not buttoned up enough or we don't have it all figured out. And I'm saying just go and you will figure it out along the way. Sarah, do you think that um, in this uh, in the current environment we're, we're in, will entrepreneurs, do you expect to hear more entrepreneurs who are thinking more about this focus on single product or growing slowly or growing in a measured way versus the idea of scaling and going big and getting VC funding and selling part of it, part of your, your company? I know you've always been on the opposite side of that. You own 100% of the company. Does the, does the environment we are in now change how entrepreneurs or how people think about launching and owning these companies? I think so. I mean, cash is king right now and cash is king when you're a startup and, you know, really, really focusing on prudent spending um, is, is I think going to be a, a, a lot more on people's minds right now and through this and after this. And I think cash for a while is not going to be as accessible as it has been. And I think for a lot of people that may end up being a hidden blessing. That's great. Okay. We have a question coming in from Olivia. Just as a reminder to everyone, we are here on This Is Working with Spanx founder, Sarah Blakely. Um, a lot of advice about how to start a company, how to make it through this pandemic. She's calling in from an RV somewhere in Florida. It's unclear where exactly. And uh, this question is coming in from Olivia. <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you, Dan, to you and everyone who's tuned in because I got a half an hour away from my children. My husband is watching them now. So this is like... You're like, don't you know, end. This should go on forever. Yeah. I should tell my husband it's a two-hour interview. <laughs> All right. This question comes in from Olivia. She says, what's the best marketing advice for introducing a new product during the pandemic? How do you get people's attention now when they might not be focused at all on new products. They just are focusing on themselves or how to get time away from their kids. I think the advice is the same, whether there's a pandemic or not. And that is what's in it for me, the W I I F M I've learned that way back in my sales days. And that is, you know, stay very true to what are you offering? What's in it for the customer and lead with that lead with purpose, lead with your story. I think uh, a why, you know, Spanx, I've been so deeply connected to wanting to help women. And that has been the ethos of Spanx for 20 years. And I've stayed so connected to that purpose and the consumer feels that purpose and you know, you'll feel that purpose and it will make you stand out. You know, obviously it needs to be authentic. And I always say to people, when you're trying to find your purpose or your why, what makes you cry? You know, if you're struggling with it, like what really pulls at your heartstring and there's your purpose, there's your why. And for me, it's just women not getting the potential that they deserve simply because they're women. You know, I talk about it a lot. My mom and my grandmothers had such limited options and my mom's only 22 years older than me. And so I feel like I just randomly won the lottery. I mean, I was born in the right place at the right time in the right country and I didn't have anything to do with that. So uh, there's a lot of that that comes through. And I think especially now during a pandemic when people um, are hurting and scared, I think, you know, peace of mind and how are you going to help them is a big part of it. You know, people don't want to feel like they're just being sold to. They want to feel like you're there for them. Um, so that would be that would be something that I would suggest on marketing during the pandemic. And 
whatever whatever your story is, what is your why? Lead with it. Spanx didn't advertise for 16 years. I spent no money on advertising, basically, for 16 years of this business, and we became a household name. And we. Oops. Are oh, you we there? lost you for a second with your back. Yep. No advertising. Oh. 16 years. You became a household name. Are you there? Oh, we're here. Can you hear us? Uh oh. I don't know. Did, did did you lose me? No, we lost you for a second, but you're back. Can you hear us? Let's see here. Can you hear try. me? I can hear you. Can you hear us? All right. I'm writing a note to Sarah right now. I can't we hear you. Can, can you hear me? Here. Oh, my pen's dead. Yes, we can hear you. I'm not sure what you. to do. Ah, okay. Okay. I can't hear you. Hmm. All right, hmm. then Hold I think on, what people. we're going to do. I'm really not IT savvy, so let's see. Okay, now, hello? Hello, can you hear us, Sarah? Can you hear me now? I'm going to oh, just God. keep talking, and then Sarah's going to tell us when she hmm. uh, when she can hear, Sorry. Us. can hear us. No? Okay, this is what happens with live productions. When you're getting someone outside of an RV, it's not surprising. Okay. That we will. Oh, Sarah, I, can you hear us? I can't. All right, we're gonna put. We're gonna take Sarah. Hello. Into, can you? Can For you, some reason, yeah. you you don't have audio. Okay. Uh, here's what we're going to do. Well, I'm gonna read some comments. Uh, we're just getting some such amazing comments coming in about this call. We're gonna see whether we can get Sarah back in on the call. In the meantime, uh, some great comments coming in. Amanda, innovative ideas can come from anyone on the team. Love that. Christina said, "I love you, Sarah." Melissa Go Knowles, Sarah is a uh, Florida State graduate, so showing some school spirit. And uh, Tanya said, great advice, keep moving forward and create raving fans. Um, we are, I think we've been really uh, lucky to get as much of Sarah as we've had. It's been a lot of really incredible advice and uh, thoughts about how to make it through this, these really tough times. Uh, and I think that the it'll be re really interesting to see who gets funding for the Red Backpack Fund and what the impact is of those $5,000 grants and the advice from Sarah Blakely that comes with it. So this has been, this is working. We were, uh, we're so glad to have you here. Thank you for all the people who came and submitted questions and left comments and interacted. And for all the people who were using this as a launching point to think about what comes next in their careers how they find the why and what they do and how they make connections even at a time when making connections is incredibly difficult. Uh, let us know in the comments what you thought of the show, who you want to hear from next. Uh, next week on Monday at 3 p.m., we're going to have 3 p.m. Eastern, we're going to have NASA astronaut Scott Kelly. Scott has spent a lot of time by himself. He was on the Internet, International Space Station. He knows how to make to make it through tough times and how to deal with being alone. And we're just gonna to talk to him about what that's like. Um, so Scott Kelly, 3 p.m., come back. In the meantime, leave your comments, questions, thoughts, help each other out. There's a lot of great give and get help going on in the comments already where people are sharing ideas. Sarah and the people we have on here are not the only ones with ideas. You guys all have answers too. So thank you all for dialing into This Is Working and uh, come back next week. We'll see you then.